Well, the Australian Central Bank shocked many pundits yesterday with its 1% cut in the cost of borrowing. The move has helped lift flagging markets, but it's also a sign of just how worried policymakers are about the financial crisis across the Tasman. Well, for more on this world crisis and its impact here, I'm joined by former Reserve Bank Governor Dr Don Brash. Good morning, Dr Brash. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, let's perhaps start with the Australian move. Uh, that was a big surprise, but a sign, I guess, of just how serious Australia is taking this. Oh, I think all central banks around the world are taking this very seriously. I've spent the last two weeks in the United States and uh, had some contact there with the central bank. Uh, clearly, nobody regards this as a minor event. This is a big event, the biggest financial issue, I guess, for the last six, seven decades. We're starting to hear uh, various uh, agencies in New Zealand, etc., screaming out for a bigger cut here. Given what's happened in Australia, do you think that's going to be on the mind of Dr Bollard now? Well, I think Dr Bullard will be considering all the options. I don't want to second-guess my successor about what he might do, but uh, clearly that's one of the options. But let me say this, that uh, while there are major negative impacts on New Zealand from this international crisis, particularly the slowing world economy, which means slower growth for our exports, uh, there are some positive things about New Zealand which put us in a relatively good position. The exchange rate coming off is undoubtedly helping the export sector and indeed those people competing with imports. Secondly, our banking sector is very strong. We've got a strong banking sector by international standards and that helps us a great deal. And of course, thirdly, thanks to, what, 14 years now, I guess, of successive budget surpluses in New Zealand, uh, we have a situation where government debt in New Zealand is among the lowest in the world relative to the size of our economy. So, uh, no, it's not going to be a good time for us in the next year or two, but we're in a much better position to ride this storm, I think, than many other countries. Just on the issue of banking, I mean, what's your message to New Zealanders about our banking system? We are secured. Do we need to eventually move to uh, deposit insurance? We're seeing central banks and the likes around the world uh, looking at those sorts of things. Well, New Zealand and Australia have never had uh, bank deposit insurance. And frankly, the larger banks have tended to be opposed to it because they feel it subsidises small newcomers and small banks. Uh, whether we'll move to it eventually, I don't know. But so far, at least, there hasn't been a need for it. And the New Zealand banking system, as I say, is, is very strong. Now, you, were in, you say you were in, in the States. Uh, what is the mood of the central bank there? We're seeing daily efforts by them to get on top of this crisis and get the markets moving in the credit markets. Uh, are they, are they, what's their mood? Well, of course, their major objective in the last week or two was getting that big bailout package passed through Congress. They finally did get it through. I'm hoping it's the right kind of package. I, I personally wonder whether it is the right uh, package, but be that as it may, they got it through, and when that's put in place, it will undoubtedly help the situation. Now, you talked about the New Zealand uh, government, uh, and New Zealand, if you like, being in a good position in terms of its debt position. But we do have a big current account deficit, and I guess it's uh, worrying to see the country, country like Iceland, which also does, you know, in real financial trouble. Well, yes, that's uh, certainly Iceland is in a real mess. I agree with that. But New Zealand has a much stronger position. The government debt position is, as I say, very, very low by international standards. The banking system is, is very solid. And uh, I think we're in a very different position than the Iceland situation. Clearly, their banks there are in quite big trouble. Just finally, apart from uh, central bank efforts with interest rates, is there anything else short-term policymakers should be looking at? Well, I guess this is not the right time to be talking about fiscal policy. Uh, we've got a big debate in, between the two major parties on, on tax and on government spending and so on. But I, I tend to be among those who feel that, that at this stage in the economic cycle, a drastic cut in government spending or drastic uh, increase in taxes to try to cover the deficit isn't the right way to go. I think we ride over the next year or two with a deficit, which is uncomfortable if it would continue indefinitely, but uh, is certainly prudent in the short term. Dr Don Brash, thank you very much for your time. The NZIER is predicting New Zealand will be in recession for all of 2008. The think tank's quarterly survey of business opinion found interest rate cuts in the falling Kiwi dollar had helped lift sentiment from record lows in the last quarter. However, it says confidence remains weak. I spoke to Dr John Yebsley from the NZIER and began by asking him just how up-to-date the survey was. Where people are in the light of the developments in New York and Europe and uh, in the last couple of weeks, we can't be sure. But I think we can be fairly confident that confidence will be higher than it was uh, for the previous two quarters. And, and it's uh, interest rates, a uh, falling dollar, those types of things that are helping? I think they are. I think the fact that the Reserve Bank stepped in, uh, and the dollar, of course, has continued to fall since this, uh, offset a wee bit, I suppose, by the, the way that, the, uh, that Fonterra's trimmed back what it's likely to pay out, 
But um, on the other hand, we don't know yet exactly how New Zealand businesses are going to absorb the, um, the changes that are inevitably going to happen in world financial markets. The, uh, what about a firm's uh, hiring intentions? We're hearing forecasts from Treasury about rising unemployment. Is that consistent with what you've found? Well, what we've seen is this quarter, the, the intentions for people to looking forward to, to lay off staff very close to what they were last, last quarter. Slightly more firms laid off than expected to. We might expect the same going forward. So it was 11 laid off rather than the six that expected to. Is that uh, consistent with uh, an outlook of, of a, I guess, a, a deeper recession or longer recession in New Zealand right through perhaps the whole of 2008? I, th I think that's uh, undoubtedly true, that, that we're, we're not expecting a, uh, the economy to, to get back into growth territory this year now. What about uh, inflation and pricing intentions of firms? Now, inflation and pricing intentions are providing some good news, which probably is going to take some of the pressure that we've seen uh, the Governor of the Reserve Bank expressing over his last few public statements, because... Uh, the figure that, the, sorry, the picture we get from the responses here suggests that firms are not expecting to uh, raise their prices. The numbers expecting to see them drift are rising. On top of that, they're experiencing some kickback in their markets. The uh, most important single factor restraining firms from expanding this quarter has switched from being availability of labour to being demand. So customers are not as ready as they used to be. So uh, on the basis of this survey, it provides more evidence for a reasonable uh, cut in the OCR coming up later this month? Yeah, different commentators have said different things. Um, it does look like um, uh, Dr Bollard's going to have a little bit more room to manoeuvre than you know, what he did uh, previously was a bit of a punt. This time it looks more like straightforward decision.